So let's talk about Clarence and Ginny, Donald and Lindsay, and their tangled treasonous web of crime, conflict, and cover-up on display for all the world to see. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So once again, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas has ignored his ethical obligation to remove himself from a case in which he has a conflict. And this time around, he helped out Lindsey Graham and by extension, Donald Trump. Here is the new reporting from The Hill. Headline, Justice Thomas agrees to halt Graham testimony in Georgia election probe. And that article begins, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas on Monday granted Senator Lindsey Graham's request to temporarily shield the South Carolina Republican from testifying in a probe of alleged pro-Trump election interference in Georgia. So inexplicably, the Supreme Court continues to seem content to wallow in its own illegitimacy. Clarence Thomas had no right to wade into this issue because he has a deep, dangerous, and disqualifying conflict. Why? Well, because Clarence Thomas's wife, Ginny Thomas, tried to corruptly, perhaps criminally, overturn the 2020 presidential election, and Lindsey Graham tried to do precisely the same thing. He tried to help Donald Trump overturn the results of the presidential election. Let's start with Ginny. Here are just some of the headlines. This from the Washington Post. Ginny Thomas pressed 29 Arizona lawmakers to help overturn Trump's defeat, emails show. This also from the Washington Post. Ginny Thomas pressed Wisconsin lawmakers to overturn Biden's 2020 victory. And this from NPR. Ginny Thomas repeatedly pressed Trump's chief of staff on overturning the election. And friends, lest we forget what text messages Ginny Thomas was sending Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, remember, she sent him a text offering the following facts in support of her argument that the 2020 election results must be overturned. She said, you know, Mark, there are ballot fraudsters who are being detained on barges off Gitmo, awaiting their military tribunals for sedition. That's some of the information she provided to Mark Meadows in urging him to overturn the election's results. Now let's turn to Lindsay. This from The Guardian. Georgia's Secretary of State says Lindsey Graham suggested he throw out lawful ballots. And friends, lest we forget what Lindsey Graham did, he called Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger multiple times. And Brad Raffensperger has gone on record as saying what Lindsey Graham was telling him to do, he interpreted as, quote, urging him, Raffensperger, to toss out lawfully cast ballots, close quote. But, of course, notwithstanding the obvious conflict, Lindsey Graham engaged in the same corruption as Clarence Thomas's wife, Ginny Thomas. Clarence Thomas waded into this area anyway and granted Lindsey Graham's request to delay his testimony before a Georgia state grand jury as part of District Attorney Fawny Willis's investigation. But there is at least a little bit of a silver lining hiding behind this enormous dark cloud of crime, corruption, and cover-up. Clarence Thomas issued a temporary stay just until Thursday 
he said, okay, Lindsay, you don't have to testify yet. And the Supreme Court is awaiting D.A. Willis's response to Lindsay's attempt to get out from under having to testify to the Georgia State Grand Jury about Donald Trump's crimes and frankly, about his own crimes. So now we have to wait to see what the Supreme Court does once they receive D.A. Willis's reply. Will they continue to just be happy to wallow in the stench of illegitimacy or will they perhaps make the right decision, reject Lindsey Graham's attempt to keep from testifying about the crimes of Donald Trump? Hopefully, the Supreme Court will choose to brush off at least a little bit of the stench of illegitimacy and reject Lindsey Graham's attempt to bury deeply damaging information about Donald Trump's crimes. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.